Occasionally, a thing comes along that is part of a larger group. It lives and it feeds among them, but it's not like the others. Well, that's Hellblade 2, or if you're a completionist, Senua Saga Hellblade 2. Hello everyone, welcome back. I played the game, I finished the game, and I watched some YouTube videos. And there seems to be quite a contrast between reviews on YouTube versus user reviews on Steam, with the former being mostly negative, calling it a disappointment, an inferior game, or a letdown, or just outright bashing it. Most of the complaints revolves around the lack of user input, simplistic fights, and the story direction. To their credit, they are not all wrong on that. But I think the game needs to be looked at from a different perspective. And this part is most likely going to be important for those who are thinking whether they should be buying this game or not. Unlike other games, you are not quite playing a character. You are more like being there alone for the ride on a completely story-driven interactive movie, if you will. And when the game is good and ready, you can start moving your powerful fingers and guide the character, only on the path set by the game. Aside from solving some puzzles and finding hidden lore, you do not get to explore off the beaten path, which is quite a shame because the visuals are stunning. But then again, this is not what this game is for. It really feels like this is Senua's journey and you are just another third person tagging along for the ride. And the game does a really good job in making you feel that way. It is not trying to bring you in. In other words, make you immerse yourself in the game. The other complaint about the combat being too simple, it is true. The combat is bare minimum, no complex combos, but then again, it is not a fighting game, it is not trying to be one. However, they still feel very brutal, at least visually, and yet they also still feel engaging. And this is a key area to know about this game. It is very, very, very and I cannot emphasize very enough, story driven with the bare minimum of user input to be able to call it a game. I think the best way I can come up with to describe this game is that you don't play it, but you experience it, which kind of contradicts a little bit on the part that I just said about not immersing yourself. But yeah, you experience it. You're just experiencing somebody else's moment. And if you know that and you are okay with that, then you will enjoy the journey, albeit a pretty short one. Because you can finish this game in a single day, like in one full-time work shift, it can be done. Which brings us to the final aspect, the story. This time around, the story is more grounded. It's being presented in a clear manner what is real versus what is not. Senua even meets some new friends along the way. I mean, the first one was something new, something different. It revolves around the whole subject of psychosis, pair that with Norse mythology, and you get something that people didn't expect. Plus, you have the twist at the end with the whole blurred line between what's real and what's imagined by the character. It just took people by surprise. Now, how do you even top that? I mean, you can only twist the psychosis part so far. You cannot just do the same trick again in the sequel. And then sequels, just generally speaking, 
are at a disadvantage in terms of wow factor just for being sequels any really audiences are kind of ready this time around and are waiting you know for something more expecting something newer especially when the first one was so so successful and i think sometimes a sequel doesn't need to top the first part or have a new twist to wow the audience again i personally rather not see developers trying too hard to outdo the first game with some new twists and end up going completely off the rails sometimes in my opinion a sequel just needs to be satisfactory in where we see the character grow and the story moves forward and continues the journey in a logical way that makes sense the idea is to eventually reach a story and character arc that can hopefully be closed in a final installment with a bang and personally i think help play to accomplishes that Okay, so with all that being said, I fully recommend this game with no reservations, especially if you have Game Pass. It's included since day one. There's no reason to not experience this game for yourself. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't, but either way, you will have tried something very different and unique. It has some of the best visuals I've seen in a game, and I played it on an RTX 3060, 1440p with DLSS turned on and set at balanced, all other categories at medium. The game is also only 50 US dollars or free if you already have Game Pass. There's also none of that deluxe premium edition or early access delay release nonsense, which is kind of refreshing for a game nowadays. Okay, if you like what my brain has spewed out today, please support me with a sub or a like. I never send out notifications when I upload. Notifications are annoying and I won't do that to you. Thank you all for watching. Enjoy the game, have fun, and I'll see you all in the next video.